everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And welcome to the Film and TV channel. We have a little family film to have a look at today that's uh, just uh, been released a few days ago on uh, the Netflix service. So today we're going to have a quick look at uh, a film entitled The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Please, if you're new to the channel, you enjoy what I do. I try and inform and give information on these films as well as other people's reviews and a general public feeling out there, plus my own little thoughts and views on the film as well. So if you like that, please push that notification button. Uh, you'll see loads of film and TV stuff, including these reviews, TV drama reviews, also uh, little information vlogs on what's out on DVD and what's coming to the cinema. Yes, as I'm doing this, uh, the cinemas are preparing to reopen here in the UK, so I'll be doing some cinema release uh, vlogs on a, on a regular basis as well now. And you'll also see some stuff on my football team, Manchester City as well, so if that's of any interest, please have a look at that again. I do City Pass, City Present, City Quizzes, City Book Clubs, loads of different things on there about uh, Manchester City. So if you do know anyone who might be interested, please point in my direction. I'll be very grateful. Uh, but we're talking film and TV today. So if you do like stuff on film and TV, if you follow or friend me on Facebook and Twitter, I do lots of stuff on there as well. And I do check every two or three days and follow and friend everyone back. So if you're after any followers or friends, uh, seek me out on there. All comments, very welcome. On this film or anything you want to do, or want to say on film and TV, that'd be great. And uh, if you don't have time for a comment, uh, if you enjoy what, what you see, please just give us a little thumbs up. Right, The Mitchells versus The Machines, yeah, 114 minutes runtime, that includes all the credits, obviously, and stuff like that. So it's about 100 minutes, 101 minute runtime of the actual film itself. It's classed, well, it's classed as everything, really, an adventure, comedy, animation, uh, kids and family film, action, science fiction, so there you go, it does, just doesn't make the tea, that's the only thing it has, it doesn't do. It was previously entitled uh, Connected, yeah, Sony sold the main distribution rights to Netflix, and Netflix actually retired it uh, to the Mitchells versus Machines, which was the preferred title of the uh, co-directors. Uh, yeah, it was co-directed by uh, Mike Rianda in his de feature directorial debut and co-directed by Jeff Rowe. So they, those guys had named it that originally, then it got lost and obviously the, the Netflix went back to that original title. It was released in selected theatres on April 23rd, probably a good way to experience it actually, we'll talk about that later. And it was streaming release was on April the 30th, so just a week later. It was actually written also by uh, Rianda and Rowe, the directors as well. And it follows this tale of a dysfunctional family, well, you know, a normal family from what I saw, what I could see, a sort of normal family anyway, that winds up having to save Earth from a robot uprising while on a road trip. But yeah, well, these things happen, don't they? It stars the voices of Abby Jacobson as Katie Mitchell, an aspiring filmmaker who is the daughter and probably the cent central character in the film, Danny McBride as Rick Mitchell, the father, Maya Rudolph as Linda Mitchell, the mother Mike Rianda as Aaron Mitchell, the dinosaur-loving son. Uh, Rianda also voices the talking dog, the Furbies. Yeah, they they come into it, and a Wi-Fi enthusiast, so he does other things as well. Olivia Coleman as Pal, a virtual assistant invented by Mark, and Eric Andre as Dr. Mark himself, Dr. Mark Bowman, a scientist who is the founder of Pal Labs and the maker of Pal. Is it any good? Uh, yeah, well. We're getting good reviews, aren't we? The critics love it. Rotten Tomato, it holds a, a positivity approval rate of 98%. That's based on 137 critics' reviews. An average rating of 8.3 out of 10. That's quite high. That's up there in the upper echelons of uh, review marks from critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, with 134 fresh and just three rotten. So, yeah, so the three people didn't like it, but there you go. There's always going to be some. The site's critics' consensus reads, eye-catching, energetic, the Mitchells vs. Machines delivers a funny, feel-good story that the whole family can enjoy. And the audience uh, sort of more or less agree. They've got a 90% positivity rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Metacritic, the other side, we have a quick look at uh, scoring 81 out of 100. So again, very, very high based on 30 critics. And it does score between as low as 58 out of 100 to 90 out of 100. Yeah, the Hollywood reporter David Rooney quite liked it. He gave it 60 out of 100 and said... Ultimately, this is an original adventure that feels stitched together out of a hundred familiar film plots, often freely acknowledging its pop cultural plundering, as in the family's obligatory slow-mo power strut away from a building exploding in flames. 
part of it. But for audiences content with rapid fire juvenilia, the busy patchwork of prefab elements will be entertaining enough. There you go, no, it's, you can always rely on David Rooney, some interesting prose. Uh, the Guardian's Benjamin Lee, well, he liked it a bit more. He gave it 8 out of 10 and said, While some of the in your face attempts to combine YouTube videos with animation are jarring at best and annoying at worst, the cautionary stabs about unregulated big tech that come alongside are no bad thing. Nestled within the framework of a brightly coloured kids' movie, it's also genuinely funny. Uh, a credit not only to the hit and minute script, but also to a finely picked cast of comic actors. Internet movie databases, Joe Public, you and me, well, there's a lot of people watch this so far. We've got over 23,000 reviews, 23,000 children, 92 as I'm recording this. And it's getting an overall score, not too shabby, 7.9 out of 10. So anywhere up to the 8, you're getting a very, very uh, good bang for your buck there, aren't you? Uh, there was many, many 10 out of 10s for this, which is, you know me, I do ignore those. I mean, they're either people connected with the film or, you know, nothing. nothing's 10 out of 10. I'm sorry, this isn't 10 out of 10 either. But uh, yeah, some of the good sort of headlines, uh, a great family movie, said someone, someone else, Pixar has some competition. Someone else, treat your virtual assistant well well you probably have to hyperactive but heartfelt said someone else and finally this was quite a good one sugar rush for your eyeballs but a good one uh, the bad, yeah, there is bad, as I say, it's 7.9, but it doesn't mean it doesn't get some low marks. But interestingly enough, a lot of the bad marks are sort of only giving it 4 or 5 out of 10. You don't get any silly 1 out of 10s again, which I uh, like the 10 out of 10s, I just tend to ignore anyway. But at least the constructive in the criticism. But some of the bad, anyway, The Incredibles meets iRobot, only very cringy. Yeah, I can, I can see where that's coming from. Feel like it's never going to end. <laughs> I can, well, I can sort of share that sentiment, a bit more of that in a moment. Visually, stellar but fails on every other level the animation is good someone else says but it's just fast paced mediocre garbage yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say garbage but i can, I can see the point right my little thoughts on it yeah i mean it's definitely a film for the smartphone youtube generation isn't it and to say some of the some of the graphics and stuff in it uh, it's just got that feel to it but uh, yeah superbly produced non-stop non really uh non-stop a sale a sailing of the senses to be honest with you i mean it would have been interesting perhaps a bit headachey to watch on a on a big screen if you managed to watch this at the theatre not too bad on a, a home on a, on a slightly smaller screen but yeah yeah my main criticism and this is my only real criticism of it um in the cinema i probably may have just fallen asleep despite all the sensory input to be honest with you because once again it's just an animation that's just far too long uh, even the ending even the ending of the thing just seemed to drag on it just you know rather than get it ended it just went on to another little scene then went on to another little scene so yeah it just dragged on and on a little bit for me you know me and animations i think anything uh run time of one hour 20 minutes to perhaps one hour 30 at pinch but one hour 21 to one hour 25 is fine this is a runtime about one hour 40 so not overly but it just felt long it just felt long watching it it just seemed to go on and on and on uh a big budget though it was a big budget 50 100 million so i think the fright of taking stuff out i'm not sure they leave anything on the old cutting room floor like they do for films but these sort of things because they spend that much money on them i think they want to make use of all the animation all the computer animation they've done so when you spend that sort of money i do i do tend to think you know when you're looking up to the two hour mark all right that includes the credits but i mean you know that's what you're looking at an hour and 54 it certainly puts me off when i start to watch these things but uh, uh they do pack loads of stuff in course they do but i find myself i found personally occasionally just switching off i mean always sort of brain went out of gear and possibly missed some good elements but uh, so it's probably something you could watch uh, or sort of watch while you're doing something else again and again as an adult but obviously it's not aimed at adults is it it's ideal for kids to, to watch and dip in and out of as and when they want to watch it so that that's my own real criticism it's not a bad criticism as i said because they do pack loads in it's not there's a couple of monologues a little bit mm, you know we were you know yeah okay but uh apart from that they do pack a lot of action and a lot of uh, the humor's okay i did smile two or three times i think i sort of almost laughed once but uh yeah the humor's okay it's not not great so it's just a matter of throwing things at you to be honest with you and possibly it's over if you're watching with the kids it's probably best watched in two parts have a break halfway through because uh, i could imagine some of the younger elements of the family getting a little bit a little bit bored at times but again they can 
pick it come in and out of it can't you can leave it running they could be on their on their own phones or doing things which is ironic really isn't it but uh, you know they could do that and then just pick up little bits of it that, that are loud and then get involved and then go back to doing whatever they're doing so it probably w wins all round. you know it's, it, say it is it is a criticism but i'm being a little bit picky with this so because overall it's a, a good job done and a, a worthy a worthy addition to the family film market you know we, we don't get Top, as many top quality family films perhaps as we should do. I mean, Raya and the Last Dragon uh, was my still remains my recent f favorite family film. But this this ain't bad. This sort of uh, sits in nicely behind it. If, if a couple of perhaps a point or two behind it on the ratings, but uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that is still remains my recent favorite, which is Disney, isn't it? And still, obviously, this does this does challenge Disney, Sony, and Net Sony obviously sold it to Netflix, but Sony individually, Sony Animation. Uh, is a big challenger, isn't it? But uh, yeah, Raya and the Last Dragon is the standout of the most recent films. But this is a very worthy addition. Addition. So my score, yeah, I'm going to give it a nice good seven out of ten because I said that even though that I got a little bit, got a little bit long. Um, there's a lot, a lot in this to enjoy and like, especially, especially for a family watch as well. Let me know what you think anyway, if you get to watch this. Uh, thanks for watching. Whatever you're going to do this day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To so meet here again on the Film and TV channel, or perhaps you have a flit across, have a look at my uh, Citizen channel, my football channel, whatever it is. All I ever ask of you is please stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.